Mr Crispin here once again and today we're going to be making some axles. Now a couple of things before we begin. One is um, I started these axles maybe three or four months ago and then had a break so the original footage is uh, done with my iPhone so just bear with it while that runs through until we get back to the new footage. Uh, also, as it's an early recording, I hadn't had much viewer feedback at the time, so you'll notice I skip out quite a lot of the actual cutting and just jump from uh, step to step. So uh, hopefully you'll enjoy the video. Today's job is to make some axles. This uh, axle here is similar to the ones I'm going to be making. This is a set of wheels off a different part of the loco. Uh, I'm going to make some bigger axles for the main driving wheels today. So I've got some metal and I've faced the ends off and put a centre in and I'll show you the setup I'm using to machine these now. I'm here at the lathe with the normal turning between centre setup. I've got a centre in the headstock, a centre in the tailstock and a centre hole in each end of the axle. I can mount the um, holes into the centres and that gives me um, a fully supported length that I can turn all the way down. To drive the piece I have this driving peg on, on the driving plate here which is powered by the motor and clamped onto the axle I have this driving dog which basically um, sits in front of the um, driving peg here and turns it round and so that's how the piece will be powered while I turn it. One thing to keep an eye on when turning between centres is how parallel the work is because if at this end I'm off centre so if this tail stock isn't on centre I'll end up with a taper so a different diameter here to down here. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a light cut and then measure to see how parallel I am and if I need to make any adjustments to the alignment of this end I can do. Ideally in this end I would have a, a revolving centre like this one where the, this can stay still and the centre can actually turn but just because of the thickness of the body I can't really um, afford anything fatter here without having to extend things further than I'd like to. So I've managed to get away with it uh, in this setup but the downside is this is a fixed centre so that's actually going to stay still while this spins which could cause some wear. Ideally I'd have a, a high pressure grease or something to uh, ease the wear but I haven't got any so I'm just going to use oil for this. No coolant on this machine, so I just have to make do with a brush. I'm not aiming for any measurement here, I just want to see how close the two ends are in terms of diameter. This end is about one thousand smaller, so I'll make a small adjustment and try again. I've got this diameter down to the right size now and it's nice and parallel. The next step is to turn down a small, uh, smaller diameter on each end that the wheels will be um, force fitted onto. So I'm going to turn a little shoulder down and a smaller diameter uh, that's a thou and a half bigger than the hole in the wheel. And then 
um, I, when, when I finish the wheels I can press them under each end. So the crucial things will be the diameter for the force fit and um, the distance between uh, the shoulder here and the shoulder here to get the wheel spacing right. Okay, I'm back from the lathe now, three or four months later, and two operations have been done to each end. Um, one of these operations has been to turn this diameter down to where uh, I'll get a good press fit um, in the wheel. And the other thing is I've cut an oil groove. And I'm going to move on to talk about the oil groove now because the last thing to do on these axles is to put an oiling system in. So I'm going to talk you through that now. So here you're looking at the basic design of an axle. On the extreme ends there is a diameter and a shoulder and this gets pressed into the bore of a wheel and uh, fixes it in place. Further back there's this diameter here and this is accurately machined and concentric to this diameter and this is the diameter that runs in the bearing. So I've shown my split journal bearings a number of times on YouTube and this is the three quarter inch diameter that runs in the three quarter inch bore of the bearing. One of the issues um, with this is you need somehow to be able to get lubrication around this diameter as it's running in the bearing. The bearing sits in that kind of a place so somehow you've got to get oil around the diameter and that in the case of larger locomotives is done by feeding oil through an oil hole in the top or in the side. However I plan to use a slightly different method which is often used on models. What I've done as I just showed you is to put an oil groove uh, which runs basically like that around midway where the journal bearing sits. Now to get oil into this groove, rather than trying to f feed oil in through the periphery, I'm going to feed it through the end of the axle. So as well as having an oil groove, I'm eventually going to drill a hole all the way through, a cross hole, and have an intercepting hole going out of the end of the axle. Now, a hole all the way through is fine. The oil can travel in and hopefully get around the periphery. But in a journal bearing, you get huge pressures at the top of the axle where the bearing is pressing down and squeezing the oil out. So somehow you've got to retain the oil that's in there. And to do this, I'm going to put a spring in here, then a ball bearing, and then a little screw-in plug. And that screw-in plug will have a hole in it, and that way you can feed oil in. It, the pressure of the oil being fed in pushes the ball off its seat, compressing the spring, and the oil then gets into this system, and as soon as you stop pumping oil in, the ball springs forwards and the oil is trapped in there. It will come out eventually, um, but over the course of a run, so you've got plenty of time to top it up without the oil disappearing. Here is a slightly more detailed drawing. So as I explained, a cross hole and a hole going into the end of the axle with a spring, a ball and a retainer. I'm going to call this retainer a ferrule. And just one thing to mention about it. It needs to have a reasonable seat on the ball uh, at this end to stop the oil leaking out. And so I'll show you how I'm going to make a nice seat for a ball to sit in on the back. And on the other end, I want it to have a taper that matches that of the centre in the end of the axle, in case I ever need to put these axles back in the lathe between centres. Um, so I will now show how I make these ferrules. We'll drill the cross holes and assemble it. Um, I've done this um, drilling and tapping in the end of the axle on a bigger lathe elsewhere, where I've been able to hold the axle in a collet, uh, going through the spindle um, on this OD. 
in my lathe the axle won't fit down the spindle so there's no real way of getting uh, the axle in a position where I can drill and tap down it so the drilling and tapping down has already been done all that remains is to drill the cross hole and make the ferrules I'm setting up to make ferrules now and I've made three uh, here is one that's the back end of it just a simple hole and uh, the other end is a centre drilled portion with a, a thread all the way down the outside I'm doing three at a time to maximise my work stick out versus number of setups so I get away with this at about um, three at a time A liberal amount of oil even though it is a free cutting material and then just bring the dye up and it'll feed its own way in okay the thread has now been cut it looks pretty good just feeding out despite that crunching noise when it first fed in it's cut pretty nicely okay if you remember when I showed the um, example of a thread it had a hole and a centre drill portion and I've carefully selected the size of centre drill so that the end bit is the right diameter so all I have to do now is feed the centre drill in until the face of this bar is fully consumed by the cone of the centre drill so in other words I've got a full uh, cone and then into a hole It'll become clear anyway. That's got it. Now to do another three like that, then I'll show you what I'm doing to the back face. I'll do the rest of these off camera, but it's just a very straightforward face off, centre drill, and then hacksaw off uh, once more through, then I'll switch around to doing the other sides. I need to finish the back sides off and the way I plan to do this is by using a little fixture that I've already made if you can call it a fixture it's basically a, a turn diameter with a M5 thread all the way through and in the back I've got a, just an M5 cap head so what I can do is take the rough end screw it into this diameter and then just lock it up from the back and all I need to do here is face off basically so I can lock that up reinstall it into the chuck and now we have um, a pretty true running part ready to be faced off so all I'm going to do is face it off
the final thing to do is make sure that the ball that sits up against this face is going to have a good seal and to do that I use a burnishing stick or a bronze ball soldered on the end of a rod so here's my burnishing stick and I'm going to use it just to put a, um, a nice seat just by pushing hard against there you might be able to see that shining edge there which is the burnished seat so that should be ready for action now I'm drilling axle cross holes now there's about a 1 16th hole that goes right the way through this um, oil groove uh, to intercept the main hole and um, I've set up my drilling vise with this uh, little jig which some of you may be familiar with I'm starting with a small uh, centre drill and I use this to actually line up the position that I'm going to drill in and that started pretty well right where I want it should have a fully formed cross hole. So the way this works is I take a spring and put it down into this tapped hole. Then I take one of my balls of steel and sit that in there. These are uh, just stainless. And then I take the brass ferrule and turn it a few turns then take the clean end of a tapered file or a tang of a file might do and I can then screw it all the way in the file just grips it enough to turn it and then looking down we've got the ball seated against that burnished uh, bottom before I can actually demonstrate these I need to make an end for the oil can that fits down there otherwise the oil just splurges out at this end without getting beyond the ball so um, I need to make an end for an oil can but I'll do that when it's required so there we have it uh, three axles for the main driving wheels with uh, in axle lubrication I hope you've enjoyed the machining of these axles and see you on the next video